Hello and welcome to the video. If you're looking to sell your courses online, you've come to the right place. Today we're going to be building a fully featured course website using the LearnDash Learning Management System plugin for WordPress. And we're going to do it all for under $225 for the year. That's going to include site hosting, a domain name, a security certificate to encrypt all your site traffic, as well as the LearnDash license itself. And this is the site we're going to be building today. Let me show you around. We'll be building a beautiful home page featuring your courses on an attractive grid. We'll also build another page where you can sell memberships to your site. You can do so on a monthly, yearly, or even lifetime access basis. We're also going to build a My Account page. This page is going to show users their profile as well as all the courses and certificates that they've earned. And here's a look at an actual course. It features a handy navigation bar, lessons, topics, as well as quizzes for your students. So we'll be building all this and a whole lot more. So why not grab a drink, get comfortable, and let's build this thing. All right, let's go. All right, welcome back. We're ready to get started here. So the first thing that we'll be doing today is we'll be purchasing a hosting plan as well as a domain name for our site. And the company that we're gonna be using is called SiteGround. Uh, they're a company that uh, I've used myself personally. I've had a couple of years experience with them and I, I cannot recommend them enough. In fact, I've actually arranged for a special deal for you guys. Um, you're gonna get you 73% off your first year of hosting. It's a great deal. Uh, to get it, just open your browser, type in learndash.education forward slash SiteGround deal. And don't worry, you don't need to write that down. I'm gonna include that in the description below. But uh, like I said, enter that link and it'll take you to this site where you'll see you have the 73% off. And like I mentioned earlier, these guys are fantastic. Cannot say enough good things about them. Um, their uh, platform is powered by the Google Cloud. They use uh, solid state drives. Uh, so you're getting uh, really, really fast speeds for your website. Uh, they lose, use the latest versions of PHP, and um, they also will include a free security certificate to uh, encrypt your traffic. So all in all, it's a great deal. So to get started, hover over the Hosting tab, click on WordPress Hosting, now click on View Plans, and you'll see we have a couple of options here to choose from. Uh, the one that we'll be using today is the Startup Plan. It includes one site. 10 gigs of storage, as well as enough resources to handle about 10,000 monthly visitors. So if you're just getting started with your course, this is a great place to start. Uh, if, however, you know you plan on uh, hosting more than one site, uh, feel free to go ahead and choose the Grow Big or Go Geek plans. Uh, they, can be, um, they might be better suited to your needs, but for today, uh, we're just gonna stick to the one site and we will be choosing the uh, startup plan. So click Get Plan. And we're going to uh, make sure the register a new domain button is selected and enter the uh, whatever address that is you'd like to um, you'd like to use for your site. So for here, we'll just type learn dash super site. Uh, we'll use the dot com suffix, but if that's not what you'd like, uh, you can see here that they have a whole list of uh, suffix suffixes for you to choose from. So there really is something for everyone. But like I said, we're going to, uh, oops, make sure the register a new domain button is selected. So there again, we have our uh, site name, uh, .com, and we're ready, so we're gonna click proceed. All right, so now this takes us to a page where we're just gonna have to enter some account information, uh, the uh, details of our business, as well as the credit card information. And you can see down here, there's at the bottom, um, it has the uh, plan that you've selected as well as a few options uh, as far as upsells go. Um, you might be interested in choosing the domain privacy option. Um, that'll protect your personal information and prevent you from getting a lot of spam. So um, it's something I recommend, but uh, for today uh, we're going to keep that uh, setting as is. We'll select these two boxes, click pay now, and I'll see you on the other side.
Now that we've uh, purchased our hosting plan and our domain name, we're ready to go ahead and install our site, security certificate, as well as our WordPress installation. So make sure you're logged into your SiteGround account and from the top banner, go ahead and click on websites. And once the page is done loading, go ahead and click on new website. And be sure to select the existing domain so that we can use the domain that we just purchased. And from the drop down list, go ahead and select the domain that you've selected and click continue. Now we're going to click skip and create empty site. And here's just an upsell. Um, if you're interested in uh, added malware protection, you can go ahead and add that, but we're going to leave that as is for now and click on finish. And we just need to wait a moment or two for our site to be created. All right. So now that our site's been selected, we want to go ahead and click on site tools. All right, from here, we want to go ahead and click on security from the left hand toolbar, click SSL manager. And we want to make sure that the proper domain is selected under install new SSL. So we have the domain we selected earlier under select SSL, choose the let's encrypt option. And when you're ready, click on get and that'll install the certificate on your website. So once the uh, certificate is finished installing, you'll see it listed under Manage SSL here. Uh, you'll have your domain name, the name of the certificate, Let's Encrypt, as well as its status. Uh, here it says that mine has been imported. That's just because I'm using an existing certificate for my site. Uh, you, however, will just have uh, Let's Encrypt listed under there. So now that we've installed our certificate, we're ready to go ahead and install our WordPress application. So from the left-hand toolbar, Go ahead and select WordPress, install and manage. And under install new WordPress, we want to select the WordPress option. And now we just need to enter some account information for our new site. So here I'm going to enter a username. I'm just going to use uh, Jay Sheldrick. I'm going to generate a password. And here, this will be the email address that's going to be used for your uh, in, for administration purposes. So any emails uh, that you're sent to the site administrator will go to this address. So again, select your username. This is what you'll use to log into your WordPress account, your password, and the administrator email. Uh, now, deselect install with WordPress starter. Uh, that's just gonna create some bloat and crowd our workspace. So we wanna make sure that's unselected. And uh, now that we're done, we just click on install and wait for the WordPress application to finish installing. All right, so now you can see we have had our uh, uh, WordPress has been installed on our site and it's time to log in. So just go ahead and click on this icon here, the arrow superimposed on the door. It says log into admin panel. Click on that. And here we are in our brand new WordPress site. So we're ready to get started installing our plugins, our theme, but I'll see you in a moment. All right, before we start installing our plugins, there's actually a plugin we need to purchase first, and that's the Learn Dash license itself. So what I'd like you to do is open up a new tab, enter in the site learndash.education forward slash learn dash deal. And that'll take you to the Learn Dash uh, site where you see the various license packages available. Um, so depending on how many sites uh, you're plan on using, um, you might want to use the Pro or Plus package. But we're sticking to one site today, and so we'll be using the Basic package. And not to worry, the Basic patch package includes all the features of the Plus and Pro package. It's just limited to one site. But as you can see here, there's some of the features. There's unlimited courses, unlimited users, drip feed lessons, uh, there's certificates, there's a badge system, um, you name it. This is a fully featured course website that we'll be building. And the license is only $159 right now. It's on sale. Uh, however, I have been advised that the price will be going up soon. So please take advantage of this deal while you can. Um, so yes, like I said, we'll be choosing the uh, basic package for today. 
and you can select on credit card or PayPal depending on how you'd like to pay. We're going to choose credit card and that just takes us to a page where we need to enter our contact information, credit card information, billing address and whatnot. So once you do that, click on subscribe and we'll see you in a moment. All right, now that you've purchased your license from the Learn Dash homepage, click on the account link, enter your password information, That'll take you uh, to the My Account page. So here we see the latest version of LearnDash, version 4.01. Um, so make sure that you've uh, selected the Downloads tab. Click on Download. And that'll download the package to the uh, download folder that's um, specified by your operating system. Next thing, before we uh, begin installing this, we're going to click on License Details. And here you'll have uh, your license key that you'll need for your uh, installation. So I want you to copy that. And we're ready to install our plugins. So we just close this tab, go back to WordPress, and we're ready to begin. All right, we'll see you in just a moment. All right, we're ready to install our plugins. Plugins extend the functionality of WordPress, so they add features that aren't uh, otherwise present in the software. And we're going to add a couple today. The first one we're going to be adding is called Elementor. Elementor is a page builder and is probably the most popular page builder on WordPress right now. Uh, it allows you to create and edit website pages using a drag and drop interface, so it's going to make our site creation that much easier. So let's get started right now with the first plugin. So to add a plugin, you hover over the plugins in the left-hand toolbar, click on Add New, and in the Search Plugins field, we're going to enter Elementor and wait for it to pop up. There it is now, so we'll click Install Now. Activate. And we're ready to move on to our next plugin. So the next plugin we're going to be adding, so just again, from the left-hand toolbar under Plugins, click Add New. So now we're going to enter Starter Templates. And Starter Templates is uh, actually a plugin that's going to allow us to um, uh, you utilize a site template for our website and it's going to make our site creation really easy and really really beautiful so we're going to install that now click install now click activate and now we're going to move on and install a theme a theme is what defines the visual elements of your uh, site and we're going to be using something called Astra. It's probably the most popular theme on WordPress. It's extremely lightweight, so it's going to ensure fast performance for your site. So to install the, to install the theme, we're going to hover over Appearance in the left-hand toolbar, click on Themes, Add New, and then we're going to search for Astra. And there it popped up right there. We're going to click install. Activate. And now we're using the Astra theme. So now we're ready to install LearnDash itself, the plugin. So go back to plugins, click add new. But this time we're going to upload a plugin. This is the uh, package that we downloaded earlier from the LearnDash site. So click Upload Plugin, click Choose File, and navigate to wherever it is you downloaded the LearnDash package. So here we are in our Downloads folder, and if you use Windows, that's likely where it ended up. So we'll click on LearnDash, Install Now, click Activate Plugin, and we're taken to the LearnDash onboarding wizard. So now's a good time to take a break. So why don't you refill that drink and I'll see you in a moment, okay? All right.
All right, we're finally ready to install Learn Dash. Now, before we get begin, there's something we need to make sure of. So if you plan on charging for your courses, you're going to need a payment gateway. So that means you're going to have to either have an account with uh, PayPal or Stripe. So for this uh, particular demonstration, we're going to be using Stripe. So it supports all major credit cards. So all your customers will be uh, able to pay using their uh, payment of choice. So uh, before, it, before we go any further, make sure you have an account with uh, Stripe. I'm not going to cover that here. It, the setup basically involves uh, entering a lot of personal information, uh, business information. So we're not going to cover that here. There are plenty of YouTube videos, so go and seek those out and come back when you have your account ready. So now that we're ready to begin, we're going to click Get Started. And we're going to enter our license information. So we are going to enter the email account that we use to buy LearnDash. And we're going to enter our um, our license key. So once we've done that, we're going to click Validate. It says our license is valid, so we're ready to move on to the next step. So we'll click Next. And now it wants to know the kind of courses you're going to be uh, going to be selling. So the first option is: Are you going to sell just one course or multiple? So in this case, we're going to be selling uh, multiple courses. So we'll click that. And we're going to offer certificates with our um, with our courses. So we're going to choose the certificate option. So that's a video or text-based course, including quizzes and certificates. So select that, click Next. And do you want to charge for your courses? If not, just leave it at No. But we are going to be using a payment gateway called Stripe. So we're going to click Yes. And we're going to click on Connect Stripe. All right, so enter the email address associated with your uh, Stripe account. Click continue. We'll enter our password. Click login. And now we just have to enter our verification code. I have multi-factor authentication enabled, so we'll have to enter the code now. All right, so now we use select the account that you'd like to associate with the website. So we have Learn Dash Education, but we're gonna create a new account here. We'll select our uh, business information, the uh, associated with our business, click continue. So now we just look over our uh, information right here. It has our banking information um, the information for our business and we just want to make sure that's all correct. Once we're sure we click submit. And we've connected our Stripe account so we're ready to continue. So we'll click next. And these are some of the uh, Learn Dash add-ons that we have um, available to us. So we we can automatically install the Certificate Builder and Course Grid. Certificate Builder is exactly what it sounds like. It will build uh, certificates that you can award based on uh, course completion or lesson completion. And we'll uh, ensure the Course Grid add-on is uh, enabled as well because that's going to present our courses in a really beautiful fashion. So once you're satisfied with all those options, just click Save and Continue. And there we go, LearnDash is installed and ready to go. So before we finish off this lesson, there's just one thing we have to configure. We set up a certificate for our site earlier so that we can encrypt all our traffic. But now we just have to configure WordPress to uh, make sure that people are connecting using uh, using a secure connection. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom here, click on Settings, General. And here at under the WordPress address URL and the site address URL, you see it's just using HTTP. So all we need to do is add an S after the P in both the WordPress address uh, field as well as the site address URL. We'll scroll down, click Save Changes, 
And now we'll have to log in again to, uh, to ensure this change takes effect. So we'll enter your username as well as your password, click login. And now you can see the lock icon up here in the corner. That means all our site uh, traffic is being currently encrypted. All right, so now we'll click on the dashboard to bring us home. We're gonna dismiss this uh, welcome to WordPress advertisement so we have a little bit more room in our workspace. And now we're ready to get started. Okay, see you next one. All right, now we're ready for some fun stuff. We're actually going to install our theme template and it's gonna look beautiful. But before we do, you may have noticed this little uh, red dot here with, uh, with a number on it, the number one. Uh, so this is actually indicating that one of our plugins has an update uh, waiting, uh, waiting for us. So before we get started installing the template, why don't we uh, quickly uh, update our plugins so we'll know how to do so in the future. So under home, we just click on updates and look at that actually it's a it's an update for learn dash they've uh in the time that we've uh, spent uh, installing the, the learn dash plugin they've already updated it so we're going to version 4.02 so we just have to select the plugin that we want to update click on update plugins and it's done so that was it that's all you really need to do to uh, update your plugins it's a really simple process but uh, let's get back to uh installing our theme template. So we'll click on the home uh, icon, uh, home link to uh, bring us back home. And uh, what we're gonna do is hover over appearance and click starter templates. And this is going to give us, uh, it's gonna start the, uh, uh, the installation wizard for the site template. So we're gonna click on buy your website now. And here we have to select the page builder that uh, we have installed. Uh, so we are using the Elementor page builder, so we want to select that. And here's a list of uh, all the different templates that we can use. So there's a whole range of them that you're willing, you're uh, able to look through. But uh, for this particular one, we are going to search for course. And as you can see, this was the uh, template, the site template that I showed you earlier and it's absolutely free. So we just hover over it, click. And here you can upload your logo um, if you want to uh, personalize your site, if you're ready to uh, brand it. But we are gonna use the logo that came with the, uh, with, with the template. So we're gonna click skip and continue. And here you have uh, the option of selecting a color scheme as well as a uh, the different fonts that your site's going to use, but I really like the look of this right now. So I'm going to leave everything as is and click continue. Oh, and it's saying we have to update a plugin. What's this? Learn-LMS. We just updated it. We're going to click skip and continue. So here it says um, the different content that it, that it can install. Uh, we are going to leave everything as is and so we're gonna click submit and build my website. And now we just have to wait for the installation to finish. All right, and we're done. Finally installed the site template and uh, we are ready to look at our website. All right, so to exit this wizard, just click on the uh, icon in the top right corner, so exit to dashboard. And now we're ready to take a look at our site. So what we need to do is hover over my WordPress. This is just the name of the site. If you've changed the name of your site, we'll uh, list that instead. We're gonna click on visit site. And look at that. We hardly did anything and we have a beautiful site. So in the next video, we're gonna start editing the pages to reflect our business, but uh, we are ready to go. So um, again, take a little break. I'll see you in just a moment. Hello again, 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 and we're back and ready to start editing our site pages. But before we do, there's an important distinction to make between pages and posts. Pages refer to any of the actual pages on your website. So that includes your homepage, your about us page, your contact page, whereas posts will actually refer to blog posts. So 
even if your blog post appears on its own page on the website, um, it's actually referred to as a post in WordPress terminology. So to edit our site pages, we are going to go over to the left-hand toolbar, hover over pages, click all pages, and here is a list of all the pages on our that are currently installed on our website. So we're going to start off by editing the home page. So we'll hover over the home page and click edit with Elementor. And we just have to wait a moment for the page to load up. So here it is. You can see um, there's um, a variety of elements on our page. There's this background image, header, buttons, images. Here's the course grid, which we can't actually edit here on the page builder. Um, on this particular page builder. We have to edit this particular element elsewhere. But as you can see, there's a variety of elements and uh, oh, what's this? This is odd. Uh, this little pink gradient wasn't here when we uh, originally um, viewed our site. So let's see what's going on here. We're going to click this, these six dots and that's going to edit the section. So we go over here and uh, look into the style tab. And we can see that a gradient has been selected, but yeah, it's starting with a gray and going to a white. So something's a little off here. Let's just make sure that uh, this, this bug is just contained to Elementor. So we'll open up a new tab. Go to learn-demo.com. Scroll down and yeah, as you can see here, the correct gradient has been applied. So we can rest assured that the uh, problem is just a little bug in the Elementor uh, interface, so not to worry. But um, anyways, to edit a site page, it's really, really simple. Clicking on any element will open up its properties here in the left-hand toolbar. So whether that's an image, a section, heading, you name it. If you click on it, um, you click on it, you'll get to edit the properties in the left-hand toolbar. So as you can see here, we have education opens the, up the mind and that's not really relevant to our site. So here we are, we just clicked on it and we can see the properties appear here in the left-hand toolbar. So let's change that to welcome to learn-demo. And we have some Latin filler text underneath here, which we don't want. So let's click on that. And here it is in the left-hand toolbar. So let's go ahead and change that to where all your learn dash dreams come true. Because who doesn't love learn dash dreams? And when they come true, it's even better. Uh, but anyways, I'm kidding. Um, but next we have this button here and it's not really um, we're not advertising a course here in this section, so we're going to right click on it and we just click delete from the um, right click menu. Same thing with all courses. And there we go. Our heading is um, to our liking and we're ready to move on. So here is a list of technologies. Uh, it says technologies will learn and there's some icons here for some web technology, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and so on but that's not really relevant to our site. So we're going to click on here and we're going to change this to what you will learn. Now these uh, icons again are not what we're looking for. So we'll just click on this and you see these images appear here in the left hand toolbar. So we want to replace them. We click edit. And here is the, the gallery showing it. It's limited to four particular items. So if you wanted to change one, we could just remove this, click add to gallery, and choose any image from the uh, media gallery that you have. So uh, make sure you upload your images here. Uh, if you haven't already done so, you just click on upload files, click select files, and just navigate to um, to the folder where um, you have your uh, particular assets. But we're going to leave this for now. We'll just cancel it and um, you can change that as needed. So here we have top courses. So let's uh, re re replace this Latin text.
And uh, that's good for now, but we have this uh, view all courses button. But if we click on it, you'll notice that there's uh, it's not linking to anywhere. So we want to link it to our all courses page. So we need a link for that. So to quickly get a link, you can just open up a new tab, go to learn-demo or your site, and um, just navigate to the whatever page it is you're looking to link to. So we click on all courses, and here we go. We can just copy that, paste it in here, and um, click update, and that'll save all our changes that we've made to date. Now you see here that we have a, the course grid, but so this is not something that we can actually edit in the page builder. Uh, course grids are uh, controlled uh, by using short codes, but we'll cover that a little later. So we can move on down to the next section, experience, let's change that to five years, learn dash excellence. Now we can go on and do the same thing for the education and certificate uh, categories. Um, but let's go down and, uh, to this section here. And this has a little animation. And I'd like to show you how to change that. We don't all have 4.8 ratings. That's a little uh, silly to assume that we're all going to have that. But that can be easily changed. So we're going to click on it to reveal its properties on the left-hand toolbar. And you can see here that we have a counter element. So it's the animation starts at zero and the ending number is 4.8. Let's bump that up to 4.9 because we're that good. So we just go like that. Whoops. It's moving things up uh, in whole numbers. So let's go back, type in 4.9. And there you see, just uh, the animation went up to 4.9. Now you might have. Um, you would want to change the number of rankings here so that's as simple as clicking on this uh, the element change it to whatever it is you'd like we'll change it to 5236 for fun and we'll just leave google reviews google reviews as is and uh, here we have some of our uh, testimonials from uh, from our customers and if you want to change the images associated with your customers, it's as simple as clicking on the uh, picture here. Click choose image, and that's gonna take us to our media gallery. So we're going to click on the media library tab. And why not this uh, individual right here? We'll click insert media, but that's too large. So we have to, um, we have to account for that. So we want to change the size of the image. So we'll click on image size, we can do thumbnail, medium, large. So we want to have it on the thumbnail level, but even that's too big. So we go click here, click custom, and it's just a matter of playing with it until we get the right, um, right dimensions. We'll go 75 by 75. And that looks about right, not quite. So maybe we'll bump it up to 80 by 80. Click apply. And I think that's good. That's close enough. So now that we're done editing our page, uh, we can uh, just click on the update uh, button here at the bottom left. And all our, our changes have been saved. So to uh, exit back to the WordPress dashboard, we're going to click on this hamburger menu in the top left corner, click exit to dashboard. And this brings us back to the WordPress editor page. Uh, we are not using the WordPress editor for our, our site pages. Um, so click on the WordPress logo here and that'll take you back to your dashboard. All right. So as you can see, editing site pages is really, really simple. To edit a page, you have to simply uh, go to the pages, all pages view, so that it'll let you get your list of site pages. And again, it's just a matter of hovering over the page you'd like to edit and clicking on edit with Elementor. So let's do one more page. Click on edit with Elementor. And this brings us to our contact page. So again, it's as simple as clicking on an element and editing its properties.
Now we have this little Google map here and um, of course we all don't live in downtown, Man downtown Manhattan. So uh, we want to change that so we're going to click on this. So I'm going to enter 52 Osgood Street, Ottawa, Ontario. And there it is. You see the address appear on the map below. Now, so you can just enter that for your site. You can change the zoom level. Zoom out. And the changes are reflected in the map. So we see these social channels here. It's so Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. Now you probably want to link to your actual account and these aren't uh, linked yet. So click on the element that you'd like to, to, um, to link and click on Facebook. And uh, here it's just a matter of entering the link to your uh, particular Facebook page. The same goes for Twitter. and Pinterest and YouTube. And if you'd like to change the channel, you can click on the uh, icon library here. And we'll just choose, you have a whole list of um, various technology companies. So uh, let's choose Telegram. Insert. And now you see the Telegram icon here. And uh, again, you would just enter your link to your Telegram channel and the changes will be taken effect. So we're done editing our page for now. We've uh, changed the heading, we've uh, updated the map, uh, as well as we've shown you how to um, update your uh, social channels. Um, so now we're ready to, uh, to click update. And let's exit back to our dashboard. And we're back. So that's editing site pages in a nutshell. All right, we're done for now, but I'll see you at the next video. All right, so we just show you how to edit site pages. Now we're actually gonna build one. And what we're gonna be doing is building a My Account page. This page is gonna give your users an opportunity to log in as well as view their profile, including all their course enrollments and any certificates they may have been awarded. So to create a page, we'll just hover over to the left-hand toolbar here, hover over Pages, click Add New. And here we're just going to name our page. So we're going to call it My Account. And now we're going to click on Edit with Elementor. So you probably recognize this interface. This is the Elementor Page Builder interface. And here we have our basic site template, but you can see there's no content between the header and the footer. So what we need to do is create a section. And a section is what contains all the content of your web page. So you can organize them into various sections as well as columns. So to start, we're gonna click on the plus icon here. And as you can see, there are a number of layouts as well as the number of columns you can choose from. But we're going to click on this single column for now. So as you can see right here, we've created our very first section, but uh, now we need to uh, put some content inside of it. So what we're going to do is make sure that the section is selected. We're going to click on the Style tab. Under Background Type, we're going to click Classic. And now we're going to click Choose Image. So here this takes us to our media library and you can choose any images that you like. Um, you're probably going to want to choose an image that's 1920 by 1080. That's what our site is, uh, our site width is set at. So we're going to click this uh, picture here. We're going to click insert media. But as you can see, there's only a sliver of it visible right now. So what we need to do is go back to the layout tab. Under height, click minimum height. And there we have it. Our image is um, now sized appropriately. But it doesn't quite fit the visual theme of our other pages, so we're going to have to fix that. So we'll go back to the Style tab now. And we're going to open the Background Overlay. And we're going to choose um, Background Type, Classic, Color. 
and here we're going to enter the color uh, that we've been using on our other on our other uh, pages I have it here for uh, easy reference so I'm going to click that click outside of the image and we're going to tune the opacity to 0.87 to be in line with our other pages Okay, that's done. And now we just want to, if you noticed on our other pages, there's a little rounded corner here in the right bottom right hand side. So we're going to want to add that as well. So we're going to open up border and we're going to click on under border type. Oops, we're going to under radius, we're going to we're going to deselect the link values together because we want only one of the corners to be rounded. And we're under bottom, we're going to change that value to 150. And boom, there you see it. We have a nice rounded corner. So now we're ready to enter some content. So to um, add some content, you just click on the plus icon here. And here's the various uh, blocks that we're able to use to, um, to create content. So in this particular, um, in this particular instance, we're going to be creating a heading. And uh, we're going to type in my account. but we need to change the uh, color of the text to fit uh, the uh, other pages of our site. So we're gonna click on styles. Under text color, we'll click here. We'll drag this dropper over to the right, uh, top left corner rather, uh, to choose white. See the uh, six F is, F's there. And so uh, now we're ready to add another section. So we're gonna click on here, the plus sign to create a new section. And we're going to choose the uh, single column layout again. But this time we're going to enter a short code. Short codes are just simple lines of code that uh, actually produce, um, produce content through a code interface. So we're going to click on the plus sign to add a block. And we're going to search in here for a short code. And we'll drag it into the box. And now we just have to enter our short code here. So we're going to enter the login code for um, so that your users can log into WordPress. So to do that, we just enter this particular short code, learn-login. And as you can see, it produces the logout button. And it'll, uh, once clicked upon, will take them to the login page. So that's fine for now, but we want to create a, we wanted to create a uh, profile section that's going to display all the users um, profile information. So we'll create a new section, single column layout, and we're going to enter another short code block. So we'll search for short code again, drag it into the box, and this time we're going to enter the short code for the profile. So that's learn dash underscore profile, and there you can see my profile has just appeared listing the different courses that I've uh, that I'm enrolled in all right so now that we've done finished uh, finished putting in the short codes we've uh, done and created this page so we can click publish now and let's take a look and there it is my account with our login and it's currently displaying logout right now because I'm logged in and again, here's the course profile. So all we need to do next is add it to our menu. As you can see, it's not listed here, but we'll fix that in a moment. All right, see you the next video. All right, now that we've finished creating our My Account page, it's time to include it in our menu. As you can see here, it's not presently included. Plus we have this button here that doesn't really link to anything and we're going to want to link that to our My Courses page, our All Courses page rather. So we'll get back to our WordPress dashboard here and we're going to hover over Appearance, select Menus, and from this drop down list make sure Primary Menu is selected and click Select and then it'll appear here. And so now we want to include our My Account page. So we're just going to select the page we'd like to add, in this case, my account. Click Add to Menu. And there you can see it added it to the bottom of the menu. Now, if you want to re rearrange it, it's as simple as dragging and dropping it. So I'll just click on here, 
drag it up one and drag it back down again whatever you'd like so that's done we just have to click save menu now we'll click visit site and there you can see the my account page is now listed we could click on it and we have all the uh, everything that we set up earlier all right so now we have to uh, deal with that button we were talking about. Now it appears to be in the menu, but in reality it's not. So what we need to do under is under appearance, click on customize. And that'll take us to the uh, customizer page. This is another uh, place to edit your site's appearance. So what we need to do is just click on this uh, and you'll see a little editing icon up here. So we'll click. And as you can see here, there's the text, start learning, but the link is empty. So what we need to do is add a link to our all courses page. And to do the, get the link quickly, we're just gonna go back to our site. Click on the all courses page, copy that, paste it, and click publish. All right, that was easy. See you the next video. All right, we're almost ready to start building our course, but before we do, there's just a few learn dash settings that we need to uh, set up. So let's get back to our WordPress dashboard. To do so, we're gonna click on the X in the top left corner here. Then we're gonna hover over learn dash LMS and click on settings. All right, so from the general tab, we're going to uh, enable the login and registration. This is going to create a customized registration experience for your uh, users, and it's going to look really nice. Uh, so next thing we want to do is we're going to look at uh, the registration tab and just make sure that the registration and registration success pages are selected here. Uh, now we're going to actually move on to the emails tab. And here are the emails that your customers will receive on course purchase, group purchase, that's uh, group courses that you sell as a group together, and as well as the new reg user registration email. So let's start with the course purchase success email. So we'll click on manage. And we're we'll under subject, let's click, let's enter, thank you for your purchase. Now in here, you'll see that there's some placeholders that we can, uh, that we can use. So, um, so this will, if we enter the user login, it will um, list the dynamically enter the user's login information here. So let's uh, start off by saying thank you and we'll use their name. So thank you. We'll copy this. And last name. for joining site title. So in this instance, what the user is gonna see in their email is thank you. We'll say, for example, John Sheldrick for joining Learn-Demo. So that's good for now. Let's, um, oh no, let's actually include one thing. Let's say, you have successfully enrolled in and course title. This will dynamically enter the name of the course that they um, have just purchased. Now we're just gonna say, see you at, and we'll enter the site URL here. All right, so that's good. Let's click save now. And we're ready to get back to our other emails. So now there's the group purchase success. So we're gonna enter the same information that we did uh, last time, except that we're gonna uh, alter it to uh, include the dynamic group field. So thank you for your purchase.
And here we're going to use the group title um, placeholder. So we'll just copy that here. And again, see you at site Earl. Oops, that's not what we want. Yeah, that is what we want. What am I talking about? All right. So let's click on save. And we'll click back on the emails tab. And we have this final email to fix. And that is the new user registration. So in the subject line, let's just say, thank you for registering with, and we'll use site title. And we'll say your login information. And we'll use the user login placeholder. And see you at the site. And click save. All right, so there's one final thing we have to do. As you recall, we set up Stripe earlier, but there's some information in LearnDash here that we need to actually copy and paste into our Stripe account settings. So we're gonna click on Payments, and on Stripe Connect, we're gonna click Manage. And as you can see here, there's a Stripe uh, webhook URL. Now we need to copy that. And the currency, uh, we need to enter that here. So we're just gonna enter US dollars. So you have to use uh, the code for the currency that you're selecting. So USD is for US dollars. But it, as you can see, if you click on this little helper icon and click here, they'll give you um, the code for whatever currency you might wanna choose. Okay, so let's go to uh, Stripe now and we'll enter our the webhook that we just copied. Now the webhook is actually going to allow Stripe to communicate with a LearnDash and it's going to let them let um, LearnDash know when a purchase has been made so it can trigger those emails. So from this drop down menu, make sure that your, your correct site is, uh, your correct business is actually selected. So in this case, it's learndash.education. Now I want you to click on developers near the top right corner. Now clip on, click on webhooks and we're gonna click add an endpoint. And in the end endpoint URL field, we're gonna paste the webhook URL that we uh, copied earlier from our LearnDash settings. We're gonna click on listen to events on connected accounts. We're gonna click select events, select all events, click add events, scroll down to the bottom and click add endpoint. And then we're done. So now we're ready to move on and finally start building our course. Hope you're excited. I know I am. All right, see you in the next video. All right, the moment has finally arrived. We're going to build our first course. I'm excited. I hope you are too. So let's get right to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hover over Learn Dash, click on courses. And as you can see here, there's actually three courses already present. Uh, they came with the templates that we installed earlier. We're actually gonna keep those because we're gonna use them to show you the different uh, pricing models that you can use uh, later on. But for now, let's click on add new to create a new course. And here we're just under the course title. So I'm gonna enter learn dash setup. And I'm just gonna scroll here to set featured image. And I'm going to choose an image for my course. So this is going to appear in the course grid as well as the sales page. 
So, which one should we choose? Look at this. This looks perfect. I'm going to click Set Featured Image. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the builder. Now, the builder is where you're going to build out your course structure. We're not going to be entering any content here. Uh, we're simply going to build the structure of your course. It's actually the easiest way to build out a course, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a section heading. So this isn't going to contain any content at all. It's simply something that allows us to structure our course and give the structure meaning. So we're going to call it introduction. Click add section heading. And there we have it. We've got a new heading, but now we need to create a lesson underneath it. So this will be uh, where we create um, our content for the introduction. So we're just going to name this lesson introducing the learn dash setup course. Click add lesson. All right, now let's build another heading. So now we're going to uh, build a second heading for a course and we're going to call it um, buying site hosting. And domain. So click add section. So now we're going to create a lesson for that saying buying hosting. Click add lesson. Let's quickly quickly add another one. Buying a domain. Click add lesson. Now, if uh, if for instance I actually created those in the wrong order, it's really easy to uh, it's really easy to adjust that. It's a simple drag and drop interface. So all you need to do is click on the six dots here and drag it to wherever it is you'd like it to appear. So we want this to appear above uh, buying hosting. So we just move it there, but uh, actually I like the order already. So I'm gonna move it back. Okay, so we've created uh, two parts of our hierarchy. We've had headings, we have lessons, but we can also further create content using topics. So using, um, so depending on which lesson you'd like your topics to appear under, um, we're going to click on the expand button on the down arrow here and we're going to click new topic. All right. And the first one we're going to say is selecting, selecting a domain name, click add topic. And we're going to add another one, selecting domain suffix add topic. Now the same thing applies. If I want to rearrange those, simply click on the icon, uh, the um, six dots here, move things around, and so on. Now the other thing that we might want to include in our course is a, um, is a quiz. You want to quiz your users. It's a pretty normal thing. So what we're going to do is you just collect, select the content that you'd like to the quiz to appear under. So in this case, we're going to, um, let's actually put it under buying hosting. So we expand that, click on new quiz, and we'll name it buying hosting quiz. Click add quiz. And there we have it. We've created a really, really simple course. We have headings, we have topics, we have lessons, and we have quizzes. And so that we have a nice site structure now and we're ready to add our content. But before we do that, it's uh, time to actually configure some of the settings for this particular course. So we're gonna click on the settings tab. And the first thing we see here is the option to include course materials. So if there's any material that you'd like your students to have access, perhaps it's a document with some code in it uh, or other materials, we just enable this option and you can just add uh, typed content here if you'd like, or if you, for instance, you'd like to include a PDF file, um, you can attach media. So what we're gonna do is click the add media button. We're gonna click upload files, select files, and we're gonna navigate to wherever it is you have the documents that you'd like to share. 
So in this case, I have a document, a PDF called Learn-Setup, so I'm going to click on that. Click Insert the Post. And there's a quick little link uh, that will allow your users to download the content. So the next thing is the uh, course certificate. So you can associate a certificate with your course once uh, users have completed it. Um, they'll be awarded a certificate, but uh, we have still have to build one yet, so we'll get to that a little later. And uh, this option here, uh, course content, whether it's always visible or only visible to enrollees, the default option is always visible, but you don't have to worry. That doesn't mean that unpaying customers are going to be able to view all your content. They'll simply be able to view your site structure uh, so they get a taste of what it is you're trying to sell. So we're going to leave that to always visible. And we'll just scroll down to the course access settings. And these are the different ways that you can sell your course. So the first option is called open. And what this means is that users will be able to take your course for free and without any registration. They'll simply be able to click on the course and get started. Um, the second, op second option is free. Now this option um, allows users to take the course for free, but it requires them to register with your site uh, before they can take the course. So this is a great option if you don't want to sell your course but still want to capture like, emails for your marketing purposes. Uh, this is a good way to go. Now, if you want to sell your course on a um, one-time basis, you can click Buy Now and uh, enter your price. The other option is to sell it on a subscription basis. Uh, so here, you can enter the price, we'll just say $25. The billing cycle, we'll do it every month. So we'll enter one. Recurring time, so this is like how long, um, how long that the script subscription will be active. So if we leave this blank, it will charge your uh, customer every month for infinity. <laughs> so um, that's usually what most people like. You like people to be able to, to subscribe and leave it to them to un un uh, to cancel their subscription. So we'll leave that at one month. And you can enter a trial price as well. So um, if, for instance, you want to, you know, give users a trial access to your course, um, you can do that here. Uh, you can set the time as well. Um, but I only recommend that if you're using a very, very large course. And the final option is close, but that is actually not applicable to us. You, uh, to us. you need to be using um, a shopping cart such as WooCommerce to, to make use of that option. And um, as powerful as WooCommerce is, it adds a great deal of complexity. And that's not what we're looking for here. So scrolling down, the final remaining options our course prerequisites. So if, for instance, you want your uh, users to have completed some of your other courses uh, prior to taking this course, you can enable this sele uh, selection and enter um, whatever course um, it is you want them to, um, to take before this one. So there's a list of three courses we already have installed on our site, so you could choose any of those, but we're not gonna require any course requisites for this. So now scrolling down here, the course navigation settings, there's two options, whether it be linear or free form. So linear um, requires students to progress through your course uh, using the structure that you've outlined. So they have to be start at the beginning and work their way slowly to the end. Free form, on the other hand, allows users to <clears throat> allows users to take the course in any direction they want. They can take the first lesson first, they can take the last, le last lesson next. Um, that's not particularly uh, traditional. Uh, most people want their courses to be linear, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, now here, if you want to manually add users that have been registered with your site, you can do that here. So there'll be the list of registered users here, and you click on them and uh, move them over here to the, um, to the assigned course. Um, you may want to do that. There may be a use case for you, but that's uh, typically we rely on the um, uh, payment to auto-register users. And finally, this is the Learn Dash course grid settings. So you'll probably remember from our site the uh, course grid. Uh, I'll just pull it up here really quickly. 
this is the course grid here. So as you can see, it, it includes an image. That was the featured image we uh, selected earlier. And uh, as well as the course title and any description text. So we go back to our course page. Um, this is the description here. So we will just enter setting up LearnDash is easy with this course. Now you can enter the duration if you've timed the uh, your previous students and you have an idea of how long it takes to, uh, to complete your course, you can enter that here, as well as any custom button text or ribbon text. Uh, I advise you to leave that alone unless um, you have a specific need to change the, um, the uh, ribbon or the text. This right here is the default button text, see more, and uh, the enroll, this is the ribbon here. So this will display a price if, if customers have yet to purchase your course. Um, it displays enrolled once they are enrolled in the course. So I would advise you to leave that blank. So now we've finished uh, building our course. We are ready to hit publish. Just click here. All right, so that's done. I'll click back to courses and we're gonna quickly view our site. And there you can see is our new course. We'll click see more. We have our featured image. Here's the materials tab where we can download our PDF as well as an outline of the course that we just created using the course builder. So next step is to actually add our content to our, uh, to our lessons, topics, and quiz. So take a break. See you in just a moment. All right, now that we've finished building our course structure, we're ready to add the content that we'd like to our lessons and topics and quiz. So let's get started. We're gonna hover over LearnDash and we're gonna click on lessons. And as you can see that there's uh, the three lessons that we created right here, buying a domain, buying hosting, as well as introducing the LearnDash setup course. So let's start with the introduction. So we're going to hover over introdu introducing the LearnDash setup course, click on edit. And here we are at the, um, the editing page. Now this is a, a really simple interface to use. Um, it simply uses the concept of blocks. So for instance, we have our um, lesson title here. Um, so let's just add a little, um, click the plus sign to add a block and we'll add a paragraph block. And now we can just enter some content there. I just have some placeholder text that I'm gonna use. And um, so once you're done with that, So once we've done finished adding our uh, paragraph block content, we can uh, add something new. So um, wherever you'd like to add content under, you just simply right click on it. Oops, not right click. Select the uh, block that you'd like to appear under, click on the ellipsis here and click insert after. And now it allows us to choose a new block. So let's add a heading. What to expect? And we can change the heading level here. So this, the um, introducing the Learn Dash setup course is a heading one. So this is a second level heading, but we can use level three, heading three, four, five, or six, depending on your needs. But for us, heading two is appropriate. So we'll leave that there. And um, let's create uh, a video underneath it. So we're going to use the built-in Presto player. Um, now there's several options here. This Presto player is just a wrapper for uh, YouTube videos. Uh, you can also use Vimeo, uh, YouTube itself. Um, here, I'll just show you. They come up if you type in the search. Uh, so YouTube produces YouTube. Vimeo will produce Vimeo. So you can search for all your blocks that way. 
but we're going to use the Presto player. The Presto YouTube video, click on that. Now we have to enter the URL to our YouTube video. So I have one here. Click add video. And this is just a WordPress introduction video. So you can go move through the lesson adding content as you like. Um, click on the plus sign or again you can select a block use the ellipsis and click insert after or if you'd like to insert a block before insert before or you can duplicate as well so that's good for our first lesson let's click update and we'll click back to lessons and we have two more so we'll quickly just add some content to that so we'll click on edit buying hosting we'll add a paragraph block insert some placeholder text click update back to our lessons and we'll do the buying a domain oh buying hosting next oh we just did that my mistake buying a domain and we'll just add some content as well using a paragraph okay we'll clip update and we can do the same thing for our topics so topics you see the uh, two that we've uh, built during the course builder section so we let you just do the same thing select the topic that you'd like to edit click on edit maybe you want an image here so let's go to our media library unless that guy looks very happy let's choose him there we go insert after we'll just put some placeholder text again oops click update and that's good so we'll leave the last uh, topic there what we want to do now is build out our quiz so we're going to click on quizzes and this is the buying hosting quiz that we created earlier. So we're going to click on edit, click on the builder tab, click on new question. So this is just the title of the question. So we'll call it question one, add question. And you see there's a little warning flag right there, meaning that we have yet to um, add the question itself as well as the range of answers so we're going to expand this using the down arrow and uh, next to question we're going to click the pencil icon and uh, we'll enter whatever question is you like here so we'll enter what hosting provider should you use click save all right, so now the time. Uh, now it's time to add some answers. So there's a default answer right here, it's, uh, answer A. Um, so we're going to click on the pencil icon. We'll enter site ground. Update answer, and we'll add a few more. All right, now it's as simple as uh, selecting the correct uh, button right here for the correct answer. So I recommend SiteGround, it's the best. So we're, that's the correct answer for me anyways. So we're gonna choose that, click update. And all right, we've done uh, adding our course content and our quiz material. So let's take a look at what we've done. Select the course we uh, chose here. And as we can see, there's the text that we added, the video. And um, if we go to our topics, our lessons rather, we can see the quiz here with the buying hosting quiz. So let's ch ch click on that, start quiz. And there you have it. What hosting provider should you use? We'll click SiteGround, finish quiz. How did we do? Ah, 100%, how about that? All right. See you in the next video.
Certificates are a great way to reward your users for completing your course, so let's go ahead and build one. Let's uh, start by hovering over Learn Dash, click on Certificates, click on Add New, and here we'll just give a name to our certificate. And this is just for us, our users won't see this, so we're just going to call it General Certificate. We'll click Publish. And now it's time to click on Use Certificate Builder. So this is using the same block uh, block idea for creating uh, content, the same uh, idea that you saw using Elementor as well as the um, WordPress editor when we were creating our course earlier. So the first thing we need to do is uh, is to uh, create a background for our certificate. So we're gonna I'm gonna select Media Library, and I already have a background that I've uh, already uploaded, so I'm gonna choose that. Click Select. And there, we have a nice background for a certificate. So first thing we're gonna do is create a little bit of space between the top of the certificate and the text that we're about to enter. So we're gonna enter, um, we're gonna search for a spacer block and let's put it to about 125 pixels. This is being awfully funny, 125. Okay, so we just click outside the block to click the plus sign to add a new one. And we're gonna create a heading this time. We're gonna create a, have a, a level one heading. And we're gonna enter the text. All right, so let's just center that now. Change the alignment. Let's make it bold. Okay, so let's create another spacer now. And we'll leave it at 100 pixels, that's good. And now we're going to add a paragraph block. And so now we're going to add the, uh, the name of the uh, user, so we're going to create that dy dynamically using short codes. So we're going to click on the plus sign and choose the paragraph block. We've already done that. So here we're going to enter the short code for the first name. Put a space there. And now we're going to enter the short code for the last name. And we're going to center this text. Make sure it's all bold. and we'll increase the font size to 36 pixels. Okay, so now let's uh, create a new block underneath that. This time we're going to use the column block. I'm gonna create a three column block. Oh, I forgot to um, to add a spacer underneath the uh, username, so we can quickly add one by entering, putting our cursor inside the block and selecting insert after. Create a spacer, 100 pixels is good. So now let's uh, create, um, let's create a paragraph for this. We'll make that bold again. We'll center it. Oops. And we'll change the font size to 20. And in this block, we'll add another paragraph one, para paragraph block. Complete it on. Great bold, center, 20. And here we're going to add another paragraph block and we're going to use the short code for the course name. And we will center that as well. Use 13 point text. And on this side, we'll do the same thing. 
paragraph. And we'll add the short code for the completion date. We'll center that. 13 point text. And we've done, we've created a very basic certificate. So let's update that. And now the only thing left to do is we need to associate it with a course. So under Learn Dash, we're gonna select courses and we're gonna hover over the course we just created, the Learn Dash setup course, we'll click edit. And then we're gonna click on settings and under course certificate, the uh, certificate we just built will be listed under there. So we'll select that, click update. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done. So we'll go back over to our course site, select the course that we'd like to uh, view the certificate for. And since this course is, course is completed, the download certificate uh, button is now here. So we'll click on that. And there you can see we have our certificate awarded with the username entered um, dynamically as well as the course name and the date on which it's completed. All right, we're almost at the end. See you the next video. All right, the last thing I promised you we'd do is to uh, sell memberships to our site, and we're gonna do that in three different ways. We're gonna sell uh, lifetime access, we're gonna sell membership on an annual basis, as well as on a monthly basement basis. So let's get started. So we're gonna hover over Learn Dash, click on Groups, and we're gonna click on Add New. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sell lifetime access. So we're going to name it lifetime access. And in the short description, this is for the uh, course grid that we'll be using. Uh, we're going to enter in a, we're going to enter, get lifetime access to all our courses. Now we're going to set a featured image. I'm going to choose one from the list here. And we're ready to move on to the settings tab. So we're going to choose the certificate uh, that we built earlier. We're going to select buy now. And for lifetime access, we're just going to pick our number at random. We'll say $500. Now we just had to add, add the courses uh, to the group. So we're gonna select each and every one of them. Click on publish. All right, so we've created our lifetime access group. So now we're going to go back and create a new group for yearly access. We'll type in the description, get access to all our courses. With a yearly membership. We'll set a featured image. We'll click on settings, choose a general certificate. And this time we're going to select the recurring option. And since this is uh, annual, we'll um, choose the years, one, the price, we'll just say $250. And we're gonna leave the recurring times uh, empty so that way it'll just, every year it will continue to charge them. And now we're ready to select the courses. So we'll just add all those to the uh, list here. and click publish. All right, so now we just have to uh, create our access to our monthly group. So we'll go back, click add new. And this time we'll type in monthly access. And in the description, get access to all our courses with a monthly subscription. Set a featured image. We'll 
it will go to the settings tab choose the certificate we'll select the recurring option again and this time we'll just choose a hundred dollars we'll choose a monthly interval and again we'll leave the recurring times blank and now we just need to add our courses All right, now we just click publish. And now we just need to add them to a page. So the page we're gonna use um, is the page we built earlier, uh, the pricing and FAQ section. So we're gonna hover over that. We're gonna click edit with Elementor. And here you see we have um, some placeholders. We're going to, uh, we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use the Learn Dash group course grid. So we'll just select these hit delete so I just hit delete on my keyboard there after selecting each of them and so now we're going to uh, add a block and we're going to search for the short code block we'll drag that in here and the short code we're going to use is the learn dash group list short code so we'll enter that there and as you can see, we have our three courses, uh, three group bundles. So we're going to click apply, update, and we'll exit back to our dashboard. And we'll take a quick look at what we created. So here we are at the pricing and FAQ section page, and we have our three courses there. All right, so we're almost at the finish line. See you at the final video. All right, we finally reached the end. There's just a few settings we have left to configure. Then we're gonna take our site for a test run. We'll purchase a course and then the rest is up to you. So to begin, we're gonna hover over Learn Dash, click on settings. And we neglected to upload our logo earlier. So this will be featured on our registration page. So we wanna include that now. So we're gonna click on select image and uh, you just choose the uh, logo that you want for your um, uh, for, that you want to appear on your registration page so we're gonna click use this image and there we have it there so that's going to appear on our registration page so we'll just click on save now what we want to do is from the left hand toolbar we want to go down to settings and we just want to change our site title and tagline so we're just going to call this learn dash demo And we'll type making learn dash setup easy. Click save changes. All right, so we're done. That's it for the settings. Everything is ready. So let's take this for a run. So I'm gonna open a new window, go to learn-demo.com. And we can see here, we have all our courses listed. We have our all courses page of course we have our page where we're selling uh, access to our all our courses on a membership basis so i set a course uh, earlier to just a dollar to run through the payment process so let's do that now we'll click on see more take this course and it takes us to our registration page so i'm just going to do jack sheldrick here Click on register. Now click on take this course and it brings us to our payment page. So now I just enter the email I entered earlier. I'll enter my credit card information. No peeking now.
click on pay all right the payment went through so now we're taken to our course page and we have access to our course the quiz all our lessons all right well thanks so much for joining us guys I really, really appreciate it. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please hit subscribe. I'm gonna be coming out with a lot more Learn Dash videos that'll help you as you build out your uh, course site with some added functionality that I didn't cover here. So in the meantime, take care, good luck, and goodbye for now.